I was packing up today and I started thinking like, why am I doing the stuff that I'm doing? It's not just YouTube. I mean, this whole thing, <laughs> giving up the good job and going and traveling the world with my family. It sounds so good on paper. And then when you start doing it, you start freaking out, right? Like I, I left a great job and now I'm going off of whatever, like $30,000 that I've made on YouTube and a little bit more that I made with some freelance stuff and contracting stuff that I did earlier in the year. And I'm just like, oh, this is, this is crazy. But I keep telling myself, well, like no one I know is doing anything like this. And no one I know where I grew up, no one I know that I know currently, no one my wife knows. I don't know anyone that has been able to do that. I often said that like my life was boring. And to an extent it was. Like for a really long time, all I did was work and then go home and, and just lay around and do nothing. I, I would say I wasted a large portion of my life doing that. And I decided to start growing as a person. I've noticed that the more I try to grow and those goals that I set, I accomplish. And this even goes back to like, valet in Vegas. If you know anything about Vegas, like being a valet in Vegas is a good job. I've worked minimum wage jobs. I, I remember one of the first jobs I had to take when we moved from Miami to Vegas after we lost our apartment because we couldn't pay the rent anymore. And when my mom and I had to live with friends that I made because we didn't have anywhere to stay, I took a job cleaning toilets at the MGM Grand on the graveyard shift for their daycare that they had there. Under the table, I was making 50 bucks a night. And then I started working at the mall. I ended up working at Wet and Wild in Vegas. And I worked a lot of minimum wage jobs, but eventually I got into working in the kitchens and I got into working in the hotels. I worked the back side of the house. I worked the front side of the house. And then eventually I got into valet when I was right around 20, turning 21. I took a valet job at the small hotel that I was working at that was like right across the street from the Hard Rock. And that's how I built up my valet resume. And eventually I moved up to being like a bell captain there. And then I took like a different job because I got burnt out there. I basically basically could have become a hotel manager had I stayed working in that. But I always just tried to make more money. And I went and made more money parking cars and waiting tables. And all of that was fairly lucrative. And I talked about this stuff in a video way back, trying to just talk about like jobs that I've done. I was just trying to give people an idea of like where I came from. When my wife and I bought our house, I was making like 40 grand a year as a waiter. And my wife was making pretty good money as a car dealer. Then my wife got pregnant and I decided to change my route and do the whole computer thing. And that's how I eventually got in the program. And then that's what led me into YouTube. And here we are now, right? It's been a crazy ride. And now we're, we're moving. We're not moving. We're just traveling. We have a one-way ticket. We're stopping in Miami for a couple days. And then we're going to Portugal. I keep thinking like, well, like, what am I going to talk about? I think I have a pretty cool story. If I was just somebody who learned how to code and decided to become a YouTuber and did that, like that alone would be great. Like if I was like some college kid that did that, but like <laughs> where I came from, I'm a student at risk. I remember it was crazy. Like we were all delinquents. By the time I made it into high school, I was 16 years old, got arrested as a ninth grader for fighting. We caused a riot in the middle of Miami senior high. I should be proud that I've been able to change the way I have and grown into the person that I've grown into, but there's so much of that stuff that still sticks with me and so much of it that's still like part of me that, that it's hard to separate myself from who I am now to who I was, you know, 20, plus years ago, but it's all still there. You know, the memories are all still there. A lot of, a lot of that stuff, when I start thinking about like how I grew up, I'm like, holy shit, it's, it's, it's nuts. I, I don't know. I, maybe if, if there's anything that I'm trying to get across with this video is like, do the shit that nobody's doing. The shit that people tell you that you can't do, the stuff that, that everyone kind of laughs at or thinks is stupid, the stuff that you know in your heart, in your mind, whatever, in your soul that is, is right and it's what you want to do and follow it and follow that shit until you get it. And then when you get it, figure out if you want to keep going in that direction or if you can use that as a stepping stone to something else. I know a lot of people have been asking, well, what am I doing now? I'm going to be a full-time YouTuber. And it's like, why, why don't you want to code anymore? Well, I mean, yes and no. I, I definitely want to keep writing code. I don't feel that that's something that I will ever stop doing completely. That, that's part of my life now. I've done it for the last six years or so, like from learning the code to the five years of experience that I have. Like I've, I've done it long enough to where it's, it's like jujitsu. It's not something that will go away. I, I know that I can go tomorrow and step on a jujitsu mat and yeah, I'll be out of shape. Yeah, I'll get my ass kicked, but 
things will start coming right back to me. And if I go for a few months, I'll be, I'll be right back at it. And, and once I get my cardio back and I, I get back in the group of things, I know that I'll be right back where I was again. And I know that that's like the same thing with code. Like if I took a year off right now, I know that I could easily study for a few weeks, a few months and, you know, do some algorithms, build a couple projects and then probably get a job. I might even be able to get a job before that because I have the experience and as long as I don't take a really long time off, I can always go back to doing that. But now, if I do take this break from it, I can do that stuff as a labor of love rather than like having to do it as my, my main job, right? And I know that everything I've built, I've built up to this point and all the steps that I've taken, doing those little things that moving from the, the back of the kitchen to the front of the house and waiting tables and working in valet to learning how to code to becoming a YouTuber to like what's next. I have a lot of ideas and I wanna try to capture that. And I want you guys to know that if you think you can't do it, then you're right. And if you think you can, you're also right. So just go out there and do it, try it. Like just try it for a while, stick with it. I feel like a lot of people don't stick with anything long enough to really see the results. And I don't feel like I'm the best in anything. I'm not the best in jujitsu. I'm not the best in programming in learning how to code self-taught. I'm not the best at making YouTube videos. I'm not the best at traveling with my family. <laughs> I don't even know how to do that, you know, except for a couple of road trips and a few flights here and there that we've taken domestically. I, I, I don't know what the hell we're doing. We're going to play it by ear and I'm going to figure that stuff out and I'm going to figure out how to make this stuff work and I'm going to figure out how to make more stuff work. And I know that I will never be at a lower point financially than where I am now. I can lose a little bit of money, but I think I've learned enough about money and I know that I can make more money because I have the skills to do it that I'm not like super stressed out about it until I like start thinking, oh shit, I left a really good paying job and I have a little bit of runway, but if that runs out, when that like starts crossing my mind, I, I try to, you know, shake it off a bit. I'm, and if I would tell you that I'm not anxious, I'd be lying, but why not do it? Why not? What, what's my other option? Really, what is my other option? Hold down a job, pay a mortgage, pay a car note, you know, do soccer practice and the occasional weekend trip here and there on a, on a three day holiday. And then maybe, you know, my two weeks off, I have flexible time off. Maybe I can take three weeks off, but really like my future, if I don't do something different, regardless of what it is I do to make money, all feels the same unless I do something very spontaneous and ca well calculated, right? Because it's not, it's not like we're just doing this on a whim. We've, we've talked about this stuff, me and my wife, you know, and we, we've sold our house, we sold our car. We have, we have nothing tying us down. We are in a perfect position to do this. And it wasn't completely by accident, but the way all the cards fell and all the steps leading up to it, it's just kind of worked out this way. And when I tell my wife, are you down? And she's like, let's do it. Why not? Why not? How many people get to say that, that they've done this? How many people get to say that, that this is a reality for them? No one that I know. And that's why I'm doing it. And that's why you need to do the thing you're doing, regardless of what anybody tells you. Because everything I've done up to this point, I know there's plenty of people that I've known personally and plenty of people out there that I don't know that would have all said, you can't do that. And I keep doing all the things that I've, I've been told I can't do and even done some things that I thought I couldn't do. I didn't really know if I was gonna get that channel that big. I, I, I really didn't know if I was gonna get a job as a programmer. I just followed through and didn't stop until it happened. Like I, I said, I'm gonna do this and I did it. And I keep doing it every time. So why not keep doing it to see what's next and keep doing all the things that no one said that I could do. Prove everybody wrong, including yourself. This was really just a video that I wanted to make at the end of the night because I was writing down ideas and I was, I was getting lost in all my thoughts and I was wired and couldn't go to sleep because 
everything's been so crazy and my wife passed out because she was tired and I had nothing to do and I, I was packing a little bit more and I was trying to clean up a little bit and I was just like, you know what, I need to get a camera out, I need to record something and I just need to talk about this stuff. We're taking YouTube back to like 2008 shitty vlogs with uh, new and improved cameras but not really talking about much except my uh, personal life. With all that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.